A gospel reading from the 14th chapter of Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. By this time, the boat, battered by waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, starting walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they, were, had, <clears throat> when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boats worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Well, grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we hear the stories of the disciples caught in a storm. Jesus leaves them in the evening. He basically has them drop him off on the remote side of the sea so he can ascend into the mountains to pray alone. They are afloat upon that sea most of the night waiting for him. But it's not a calm, relaxing sea where they rest peacefully through the night. Their boat is battered by the waves. They are no longer near the shore where they drop Jesus off. The wind is howling, blowing them further and further away from the land. The wildness of the open sea is all around them. Their simple boat, the only protection from the storm. And while this is certainly not the first time that they've endured a storm at sea, this time, Jesus isn't simply asleep on the stern, like he was just a few chapters back. He's off in the mountains somewhere, and they are on their own. Now, some of us can relate to the situation of an unexpected storm stirred up when we don't expect We've encountered this in the boundary waters or out on a big lake when the weather has turned suddenly. We may have found ourselves in a similar situation, uncertain and overwhelmed. And even if you've never set foot in a boat, you likely know the same sort of vulnerability, uncertainty, and overwhelm all too well. Talk to the parent who is trying to keep everything together. Make sure their children have all the things they need for school to start in a few short weeks, and all the extracurricular forms are done, and practices and schedules and tournaments are on the calendar. And they're trying to make sure that there are shoes that fit, and the hotel rooms are booked, and the carpools organized, and the dentist appointments, and the yard work is done, and the child care arranged, and that last-minute vet appointment. Not to mention things like clean laundry, or groceries, or their own work. Overwhelmed. Chaotic. Or the family facing health challenges, scans and tests to diagnose. There are doctor appointments and lab appointments and therapy appointments. 
trips to the pharmacy, waiting for medication that wasn't at the pharmacy, or on social workers, or an insurance decision, or test results, or an option for at-home or residential care, managing pain and symptoms and side effects, making decisions about treatment options and next steps. Overwhelmed. Chaotic. We don't need a boat to relate to these disciples. We simply need to stop and look around. The difficulties that we face, that those we love and know face, are overwhelming. In the midst of their overwhelm in that little boat, a figure suddenly appears on the water moving towards them. His appearance is suspicious because of the water spray and the wind, and because it's 4 a.m. and still mostly dark. In the chaos, the disciples are beyond terrified, screaming out in fear. But immediately, Jesus speaks words of reassurance. He announces, Take heart. I am. Do not be afraid. In the swirling chaos of the sea, Jesus shows up and offers words of peace and encouragement. Assurance of God's power, divinity, and presence a self-assured command to not fear. Now, I would imagine that at the sound of Jesus' voice, the announcement of those familiar words, I am, first spoken by Yahweh to Moses in the Hebrew scriptures, and the reassurance to not be afraid, the disciples could finally take a deep breath. A sigh of relief they'd have an inherent understanding that they were going to be okay. And yet, the storm still rages. Jesus doesn't actually rebuke the winds in this passage. He just shows up. A close reading of the story, we see that the wind doesn't die down until Jesus gets into the boat in verse 32 at the very end of our reading. And this snapshot moment of tension, of in between the chaos and fear and overwhelm, and those in the boat finally declaring, Jesus is truly God's son. The murky middle. It's where I find myself dwelling in the midst of this story. This in-between is real life. Storms rage. Exhaustion and vulnerability surround us. Chaos and overwhelm batter our boats. Sometimes it might feel like we don't even have a boat, but more like an inflatable pool lounger. The howling wind could pick up or shift at any moment with the next thing, the unexpected news, the last straw. We are tossed and fearful and uncertain, and it is here, in that moment, that Jesus appears, speaking words of reassurance, take courage, Keep hope. I am God. Do not be afraid. You see, Jesus' presence isn't some sort of magic cocktail of perfection. The winds and the rough seas don't suddenly transform into a luxury vacation destination with the disciples sipping ice-cold lemonade on a Mediterranean beach. They're still in a boat in the middle of a crazy storm. 
Jesus' presence brings with it an entirely different kind of experience. Jesus showing up in the very midst of the storm is a salve all its own. Because they are not alone. Jesus dared show up in the moment of chaos and dwells with us right there in the overwhelm. Our own impulsivity or doubt or fear doesn't keep Jesus away, nor does our faith or goodness or devotion draw Jesus to us. It doesn't seem to matter whether we, whether we cry out or step out, sink or manage the impossible, or stay in the boat wide-eyed and watching, or paddling away in the storm. Jesus is still made known and enters into this murky space. Whether we are paralyzed by fear, or we think we can walk on water, Jesus comes among us. God incarnate. Jesus reveals himself to us in the midst of our chaos, and we are not alone. Jesus speaks words of assurance to his beloved ones take heart. You are not alone. Jesus is the great I am who comes to us in the storms of life. We are not alone. Jesus announces, do not be afraid. I am with you. You are not alone. Amen.